Welcome to the Salon Owner's Holistic Blueprint, your podcast for unlocking the secrets to a thriving salon business through holistic practices. I'm Jacqueline Rodriguez, your host, and join me each week as we explore wellness, sustainability, and business success. Everything from attracting conscious clients to adopting eco-friendly practices. We're going to cover it all to elevate your salon business. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Salon Owners Holistic Blueprint Podcast. I have got a very special guest today, Carly Ann, and she is just, her energy is amazing. What she's doing in this industry is also really cool, and I cannot wait to just dive in. We're going to have like just a real honest conversation. We don't have like any... um, like even bullet points, I'm like, uh, whatever, right? (laughs) So we are just going to have some great conversation. And thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. I've been really looking forward to this. So thank you. It's funny you say we don't even really have bullet points. But last time we spoke, we could have spoke for hours. So I don't think we need bullet points. (laughs) No, we'll just have like the hardest part about this podcast, because I truly love connecting with all of these amazing people in the industry and outside of the industry too. But w- the hardest part is just like not having three hour long podcasts because we do have to cut them off at some point. So it's like, but usually naturally it just kind of like winds up on a subject and then we're good. But I do really want to dive in. Cause like, I know from our conversation last time, like this whole self-awareness and that piece in as like a hairstylist and as our like industry is just so out there like we worry about everything outside of us like is our salon okay is our stylist okay are our clients okay you know it almost reminds me very much of like that motherly energy I was just gonna say totally a mom right yeah. like yes yeah, everybody else first and forgetting about you yeah And that's like everybody in the industry, right? So some people in the industry may be moms, maybe dads, maybe not, like wherever they're coming from. But it's that very much like caregiver energy of putting everybody first. So I think just bringing that self-awareness of like, what, what do we get to do? So please tell us a little bit more about you. Tell you about me. Uh, I was ready to like hop right into. To yeah, we could do that too. But I think they want to know who who you I are. Should probably, I should probably <laughs> introduce. You. Uh, my name is Carly Ann Moore. I am the creator and owner of Your Beauty Business Academy. So, inside the academy and coaching, I help hairstylists become entrepreneurs, um, but in a way where, like, I think you said it exactly. Like, not just the physical business things that you have to do, but becoming really self aware of how it all makes you feel and how you want to, how you want to feel in your business and in your lifestyle that it can create. And I think in being behind the chair for like 20 something years, I'm in my home salon right now, but working uh, under some horrible owners, working under some amazing owners, suite renting, chair renting, home salon, like all of the things, really looking back, I think it was that moment where I really did focus on me um and and how I felt and I put what I wanted first that was the moment when my business changed and it was I don't want to say easy but it was simple and it was enjoyable and um like just like peaceful so funny right it's totally that you can't fill or your own cup has to be full before you can fill others or whatever that saying is yes and Okay, really, really big thing that I want to point out to people, because you said like your business changed when you started focusing on what you want. One of the things that I hear so much from people who are like, you know, in my academy, um, the Holistic Salon Academy, we're talking about like shifting your whole business around the things that are most important to you, whether that's clean beauty, green beauty, sustainability, but really aligning yourself with what you want your business to look like, right? And we we were taught, I mean, because I've been in the industry as long as you, 20 some years, and we were not taught to do that. It was very much, what does the client want? And we provide that. And who cares if you like it or not, or if you don't want to work 10, 12 hours a day, or if you want a Saturday off, like 
It just was not something that we thought about. And one of the big things that I hear is like, well, we can't do that because our client needs this or our client wants this and we have to provide that or else we're going to lose all of our clients or who cares what I want because the salon needs this. That's very much what we hear. And you're right though. That's what we were taught. It was never like, I don't think there was ever an option and I'm hoping that we are changing this in the industry, but there was never an option to sit down and be like, you love doing hair. You love the whole client thing. Like you love what you do. What do you want it to bring to your life? What do you want your lifestyle to look like? And let's work your hair business around that. It was exactly like, no, you go and get a job for somebody and you work the hours they tell you, you don't pee, you reheat your coffee. Like I just made this coffee and it's still hot and I'm drinking it. I'm so excited. I haven't microwaved it. And I don't remember working in a salon without microwaving one coffee all day long. Hmm. And then, and then people burn out and they lose that passion for the job. And I don't know, man, everything is just about, I think now creating order inside. Cause if you want your results to be different outside, you have to change the inside. It's the, it's the only way to like for sustained results. Right. Yeah. And the fact is, is what I have found is when I got really clear on what was important to me, clean beauty, green beauty, sustainable, like my entire salon. So it was important to me outside of it. Right. So I brought that in. And when I say holistic, like, I mean, like I don't work Saturdays. Now, some of my client or some of the girls in the salon do, but they choose to, but we're not open, you know, 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night. Like we have a very fluid schedule, but all of this was very important to me. So I started restructuring the business around what was important to me. And guess what? We didn't like go out of business. We thrived because what happened was I attracted the stylist who wanted that type of life. Then I also attracted the clients who were like, oh my gosh, I've been looking for a salon that's low toxin or a salon that's you recycle, like you care about the earth. You're, you know, you are affiliate, like actually not affiliated, but um, we're certified with the Green Business Bureau Amazing. where we had to go through the whole list. And they're like, you, you do that? Like that's possible for salons? I'm like, yeah, but it all started because these were the things that are important to me. So I think it's like, um, it's, it's the thing. You make me so excited because so many things. Are I'm like, yeah. Um, but you're right. When you know exactly what you want, you're going to attract that, and then it's going to feel so good because your your staff, your clients, everyone will be in alignment with that. Do you think that it's just like that shift in mindset uh, from lack to abundance? Where I think when people are like, if I stop working Saturdays, I hear this a lot. If I don't work Saturdays. I'm going to lose all these clients and I'm going to lose all this money. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, you can find, like I did it. I don't want to work weekends and evenings. And I attracted clients that can come during the day. And they have those same sort of values that, that I do where they love their time on evenings and weekends and their job isn't everything. Um, There's, there's just like life is limitless. Yeah. And I think when you can start seeing the world and everything as just limitless and full of possibilities, like what we expect we're going to get. So if you're expecting to lose money, lose clients, whatever X, Y, Z, you're going to receive that. But if you expect this beautiful business with ease and to have it create a really awesome lifestyle for you, you're going to receive that. Oh yeah. And I, I think it is very much a scarcity mindset where we just think that because that's what we were taught. Okay. No right or wrong. Right. Cause that's the other thing is like attaching right and wrong to um, everything that we say. Right. It's not right or wrong. I don't want to work Saturdays or weekends. There are some stylists out there that that's all they want to work. Oh, they and that's cool. Exactly. So it doesn't matter the days, but what works around your schedule? Like there's, I, I mean, I, one of my mentors, Britt Siva, I just heard her saying something about like, if you are somebody who likes to be up at five and six o'clock at the morning, like 
open your salon. There are plenty of clients that would love to come in at six o'clock in the morning. Uh, That would be me. I would love to go get my hair done at six in the morning. I, it would be the worst experience for the client (laughs) and for me because I am like a zombie in the morning. So like for me, that doesn't work, but for others that really does. And that's the whole like basis around what we're talking about is find what works and what makes your life richer. Right. Yes. Yep. And then you said it too, all the things will align with that. Mm -hmm. And that just comes from self-awareness. And I think it comes from questioning the things that we were taught and you're right. And not that the things we were taught were right or wrong, but it's, I don't, I don't know why, I guess even just from children, right? Like somebody tells us something, this is how it is. And it just like goes into your sub and that's just your belief. It wasn't until I started having children that I actually questioned beliefs was like, wow, I don't believe X, Y, and Z at all. And I make so many decisions every single day based on those things that I was told to believe. And I think it's the same in our industry. Totally. And it doesn't, I don't know, it makes me so excited because we have this career, this job, this craft that we can use to mold any sort of lifestyle we want to. For sure. And I smiled all crazy when you were talking about beliefs and like how we, um, we really are, we're indoctrinated. And this comes from like, I'm, I'm a certified neuro coach. So like a lot of my coaching goes around, like, what is your subconscious belief system guiding you to, right? And again, it's not right or wrong. We learn things as we're younger that become our belief systems. And we, every single decision we make, conscious of it or not, it's actually coming from our belief system. 100%. Yeah. And yeah. When you can, sorry, I cut you off. Oh, no, go. When, when you can become aware of that and un, like truly understand that. Because honestly, for years, people, I heard that and I would read the books and I intellectually knew, but I didn't have that down, right? I didn't know, like believe and see um, how true that was until just a few years ago. And that is life changing. And I think it is. I think that like for me, it was, I had a coach. So I bet a lot of your clients too, because it's subconscious. It's We're unconscious of these beliefs. You need somebody to help guide you into finding them and then switch them. So, okay. So you help people in salons and in their business, but I bet 99% of what you do is truly like helps them in self in the rest of their life. Just, yeah. Well, uh, because everything that the basis is on is breaking down those beliefs and like actually allowing yourself to release yourself from these beliefs. If they're not serving you, some beliefs that the entire point of belief systems is to keep you safe. So some of these belief systems truly are amazing and have also gotten you to where you need to be. And you get to find the ones that don't long, they don't serve you anymore. So when you find those, it's like you're breaking free from these crazy chains that you didn't even know were there. Right. And no, I honestly, if you're listening to this right now and you're probably like, I mean, you might be right going, oh my gosh, yeah, this is the wrong and this is wrong. And I believe this and I believe, no, no, we get to let go of that. This is yep. nothing that you are like doing on purpose. You didn't do anything wrong. Like this is just how it is. And just having the awareness, you get to see, okay, so this is just, I believe this, but it's not helping me anymore. Break those chains and then create something that actually serves you. Yeah. (laughs) And that's, yeah, that switches and that changes like something I, you know, broke a long time ago and I changed it, it, that belief might not be serving me now, years down the road or months down the road. Like it, it, it's all fluid. And that's the thing too, right? And then I think alongside that is like the self image and that's all in there too, in this belief system and this, these images that we hold of ourselves and what we're, I, I deal with this a lot um, in helping transition people into owning their own businesses. Um, it's like that belief that 
they just don't see themselves as a business owner or these beliefs that they have to work 92 billion hours a week, or I don't have any business skills or I don't. And I'm like, oh man, if you don't, you wish you sometimes you could take your eyeballs out and put them in your client's heads and be like, I wish you could see you as I see you. And I think that is a huge part of being a really good coach and mentor is that you believe in this people, like in every cell of your body, even when they don't believe in yourselves. Oh, for sure. And what you do is so important because I'm sure there's people out there listening and I went through this, right? I went through the same thing where we get into this business, we're hairstylists because we love the craft. We love what we do behind the chair. And we're like, yeah, we want to do this for ourselves. And then we turn around and we're like, okay, this is what an entrepreneur has to do. (laughs) Yeah, it's not everybody. No, it's not. (laughs) For the ones who are ready and want to do that, but also get like, it's almost like a shocking smack, right? Where you're like, (laughs) oh, but I I, I just, I like doing hair. Like what what happened to that? (laughs) It's this whole mindset shift of awareness of like transition and to have someone like you walk them through that huge transition in their life is priceless because then you have somebody, like you said, where we see it and we've been through it. So we get to encourage you and support you through those inedible. Like, I mean, you are going to hit walls and you're going to be like, what did I sign up for? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got somebody in your corner who is not only cheering you on, but also saying, okay, so like I went through this and this is how I was able to shift this belief or shift that, or, you know, start up this way. Like that is incredibly powerful. And because you can't see your own crap. Yeah. I have been in the industry of coaching for quite a while and I have had a coach. Yep throughout the entire thing. Even right now, I have coaches. 100%. And I think that every new kind of new self-image, new um, experience, new like leap, new step in your life, you need to have some, you need to have a coach. Uh, you don't need to, but I think it is so valuable to have somebody who's been where you want to go and that helps lead you. And like, I wouldn't hire a coach unless I knew that they had a coach as well. Yeah. And I think there's um, times in, in our lives, right? Like there's, especially when you're getting started, like having mentors, having groups of people who can support you. And one of the biggest things, like I will tell you right now, as like a hairstylist transitioning into salon owner back when I did, not relying on your family. Like they may be, my family is the most supportive but I could not ask them questions. They didn't get the struggle that I was going through because they're not entrepreneurs. So finding a group of entrepreneurs, because <laughs> yeah. it's different. You're, it is different. Yeah, but you know what? That is so, so important. And I love that you said that. It, having a community of people that understand where you're going, you're either going for the same thing or have already made it and are willing to share with you. Yeah, it's so, so I bet you have, the most beautiful community in your salon and then in your coaching and in your space. I can't imagine like, cause I'm assuming you attract the people who are like you, right. Which is like when you're so self-aware you do, it must be the most beautiful supportive community. Oh, for sure. And it wasn't always like that. I had to keep that. <laughs> no, I, I did. I, that was one of the huge belief systems that I had, especially about this industry. First off, because when I got into it, there wasn't support in the hair industry. It was every person for themselves. Yep. I'm doing hair. Do not ask me how to do it. Do not ask me like about my business. I do not ask me any questions because you're going to steal all my information and you're going to steal my clients and my business. That's how I grew up in the industry. So when I decided to work with hairstylists, oh, let me tell you, it was such a scarce, I had such a scarcity mindset around it that I had to do some really deep work to see that that industry norm got to be broken and it no longer lives in me, period. 
And you're one of the people that are disrupting that industry norm. Yeah, because I saw the need. And I'm like, no, here, here, like I, there's no, there is no reason to be scarcity mindset around any of it, because I don't care if you're doing the exact same thing that I am. You can't be me. I can't be you. That's exactly. And we, we will have the people in our chair who want to spend time with us. Um, right. Like there's how many hairstylists around you, probably hundreds of hairstylists around you. Why does somebody come to you as opposed to her or her or him or her or him? Mm -hmm. It's because of how you make them feel. Yeah. How you make them feel, those conversations you have, how you treat that person. Like that is the kind of stuff that brings clients back to you. And it it has them bringing their friends to you and it makes you stand out above the crowd. I actually had a woman who would drive here from about an hour and a half away to come and see me to my, okay, so it was a crazy thing in my head. When I left a salon, I worked at a beautiful salon in the city. And I left, I went about half an hour outside of town and moved into a room in my basement. Like I'm out in the country. And uh, so, so that was a lot of like effed up things I had to get over. Like, well, can I charge the same prices? Because, you know, I'm not in the salon or nobody's going to want to drive out. Like all of the things. Anyways, <laughs> um, so funny what we do to ourselves. All of a sudden I was like, well, they told me I'm in basement Betty now. It's what they used to call it. Um, and I don't have the same skill as I did yesterday <laughs> so crazy anyways I have this client and she drives from like an hour and a half away she is so wonderful we get along so well she could get her hair done anywhere we touch up her roots every eight weeks with like a 5n 5m right like it's like just no layers just blunt cut just two pieces of hair she could go anywhere but she comes here because she feels amazing when she leaves. And I think that that so much of that stems from to going back to like the first minute of this podcast, self-awareness. And like, we all have bad days where we wake up, but like our job is to make other, to leave other people with the impression of increase. And we can't come into work like, having a crappy day and like trauma dump our stuff on everybody, not ask them a question. Like, but that is self-awareness because I know I went through so many years of my life where I had clients in my chair and all I did was gossip to them and tell them all my problems. I'm like, <laughs> right? Like 20 years old, like bore me, life is so hard. And uh, I didn't retain a lot of those clients. Um, anyways, yeah, just that that self-awareness and that understanding your energy too, right? Because you feel it. We've all walked into a room and gone, oh God, what is happening in here? before anybody ever says anything. Um, yeah, just we don't want to be that for other people. And not even just in the chair, like in, in life general. Yeah. And, but to your point of this whole, like breaking the beliefs and the self-awareness, and that was like what we started off in the podcast is talking about how to, like, we are going to go everywhere. Just hold on. Where I, you know, but this is, that's what, that's, what's amazing is like, it takes you in so many beautiful places in this industry. And when you're super self-aware and you start breaking some of those beliefs about being a basement Betty, because that worked for you, right? So when you get really clear on what actually works for you and you learn how to stand in that energy and how to speak to your clients, how to um, attract your clients that want that same thing. You have people, we have people driving from an hour, hour and a half all the time. And that's because like you said, they could go anywhere and not, they could go anywhere that there's some amazing salons around us. So it's not like we're just a, a great salon in the midst of like a bunch of crappy ones. That's not it either. It's really... The fact that our message aligns so well with what's important to our clients. That's it. And yeah. that's the important part. So it's whatever you need will align. Yes, like 100%. And I, I think that's maybe a great starting point for people whether they're just coming into this industry, they're thinking of going on their own, they're looking for a salon to work at. Like, what do you really want? How do you want to feel? Who do you want to attract? Like, 
who are you and what do you value? Like, oh man, what are your values? That is huge. And being very clear on that, I think it makes things more black or white, right? Like say you're looking to be an employee in a salon. If you know what you value and how you want to feel, when you walk into a salon, you know, yes or no, right? Like this feels good or this doesn't. They have the same values, they don't. And just in life in general, when you're clear on what you want, is that like, do you feel as well? Like it's kind of that place of indecision or like when you're not clear on something, that's like where the fear lies. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I laugh hard because I cannot explain to you how many times in my life I have said to myself, I really want this. I really want this. But maybe it's this is good. okay too. But this also will be okay. And this sounds all right. Like it has some of the things that I want. And then I'm hitting these walls over and over again and nothing ends up coming or I settle. Or you settle. Dude, don't okay. cave. And it's that word, but. Like whenever I hear the word but from me, from a client, from anybody, I'm like paradigm. Like there's some subconscious stuff that we're going to dig into because you just told me what you want. But here's all of my belief system from over the years that I may not even be aware of. So I'm going to settle. I'm going to lower my state or knowing where your standards are. This is a new one for me is really like going back in and raising standards to things. Even, whoops, even little things like I was the girl that would go to a restaurant and I, I learned this from my parents. I'd go to a restaurant and I look for the cheapest thing. Doesn't matter if I want it. That's what I would buy. Especially if somebody took me out for dinner. Oh my God. I'm like getting water. So it's like, you're not, you're going to just attract that back, right? Like the actions you make in the world, that's what you'll attract back now. And it wasn't easy at first. Now I go out for dinner with my husband and I'm like, no, we're getting apps. We're going to grab a couple of drinks. We can take a cab, get whatever you want. And it took a while, but it's at the point now where I'm like, it feels so good, right? Like it just feels good. But it was realizing that and, and breaking down those beliefs and being like, why do I have such low standards for myself? in this area. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what it is. These low standards of like taking on, and I know every hairstylist on here listening can relate to the fact of taking on a client that just doesn't feel good. Yes. You come in, you're like, oh, but it's money and I need to take care of it because I, I worked in a salon before where if you refused any service for any reason, it was termination like legit I had a crotch grabber and I had to keep cutting his hair and he would wait for me at my car at dark downtown when I get off work and they continued to book me in and continue to tell me I had to do his hair I was 21 if I was 40 now I would have been like <clears throat> see ya like oh, yeah so but yeah it was yeah crazy right and you that was the whole thing that's what the industry said that it is changing. And I see so much change in that. Right. So we just get to keep going towards that. But that's that same thing. Like, how is that OK? Was it? But that's don't you feel like that's kind of what it was like 20 years ago when we started doing hair? It, was it hasn't even been that long. I mean, like 20 years ago and up until <laughs> like I know some salons legitimately. I know some salons still that have those policies in place that you have to take everybody and it's pleasing everybody else but regard disregarding your feelings your safety your just energy and your being like what is actually important to you that's not okay oh and like your staff should be so like way more important than your clients I worked in a bar once and the owner of the bar. Um, again, it was like creepy old men and they would touch you and just like, there's like a list of gross things that happen in there. And I was a teenager and I came to him once and he said, I value my regulars more than I value my staff. I can find a waitress anyway. And I feel like I've worked in salons like that too. There was a salon I worked in. You'll, you'll like this one. And the cleaning products they used gave me migraines. Um, did they stop using these cleaning products? No. Did I get written up because I was getting migraines. Yes. My boss told me if I didn't go to Cairo and massage every single week, 
that I didn't have a job there anymore. She said, like, that'll help you. And I was like, no, it's the orange glow. It's the orange glow in the bleach. Oh. Like, all you got to do is buy, like, I'll bring the cleaner in. I, I will make a cleaner and bring it to you. Um, nope. I spent hundred bucks at massage and pyro every week instead. But again, I was 21 and I, like, I didn't, we weren't told anything differently. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we, we weren't supported in that way. And that's why it was such a big thing to like come back to terms to even want to be in this industry other than working behind the chair, like actually working with client, like hairstylists and salon owners as clients and like shifting that belief. It was a big shift in my own belief system. Right. And I have to like, we could be here for days if I talk to you about all the beliefs that I've had to change over the years and not even have to, but like, that just didn't serve me, that I got to shift so that my life is so much more abundant. And like, I, I really, really am extremely blessed. I have a good life. It's awesome. Now, it wasn't always like that, but <laughs> I built Wait. it. You did the work and, and you did the hard and you were grateful for the good. I think that's the thing too. Um, just like gratitude, right? Even if you're in a crappy place, being grateful for it all the little, like today, being grateful for my hot coffee, which is cold now, but it's almost done. There's only a sip left. Um, like that can be, that can change your life. It's just looking for the things that you're grateful for. Cause sometimes it's hard under or like uncovering those beliefs and switching things and taking chances and taking risks and doing things that make you uncomfortable and upping your standard, like that kind of stuff. It's uncomfortable and it's hard and it's like icky sometimes, but if you can throw in more gratitude than the ick, you're golden. Like, and that having that faith in the unknown. And I think this is a big thing in my, like with my clients is ha- believing in something that you can't see yet. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. And the funny thing about you saying that, and what just popped into my head is, as hairstylists, we have this blank canvas, right? You you can't see. I mean, because I don't care how many cutting classes you go to. I don't care how many balayage classes, whatever you still can't physically see the result because each person's different, all of that, right? So we blindly trust, well, if we put a highlight here, like this should look like that, but we've all been burned before and go, oh, dang, that's not what, (laughs) that's not what I expected. (laughs) Hey, what a great point. Yeah. So we can believe in that, but why do we believe in that? Because Because of all the training. It's all the hardship, all the mannequin heads that we screwed (laughs) up (laughs) in the haircuts. And because we kept going, even when we didn't know, we just kept going. So we built up this muscle of belief that, well, if I cut like this and I cut like that and I put a lot, like, we're going to have some sort of result that may look like this. Beautiful. But we don't do that for ourselves. No. We don't do that for our subconscious. No, because we haven't been taught how to do that. You're right. We've never, this is one thing I wish I could, if I had a magic wand, I would like the school system and be like, oh "Oh, yeah, teach these kids how to, how to strengthen that muscle, like the grit and the self-awareness and the like failure. I tell my kids all the time, failure is the best effing thing. I don't swear when I say it (laughs) to my children, but it's the best thing. Like fail, just fail a billion times a day, but keep going. And you see them, right? Like, so I have twin, um, the twins are obsessed with hockey and baseball. They have taped and there's going to be so many people out here that are like, I can't believe you let them do this. And some days I'm like, I can't believe I let them do this. They taped a batter's box, like a pitching Mm -hmm. thing on our wall in the basement and they have these foam balls and they will throw hundreds of them. And then they make the thing smaller and smaller and smaller, hundreds, 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 hundreds. And they fail 99 out of a hundred times, but they just keep going. And the sometimes I stare at them and I'm like, man, I hope you keep that. Like, I hope you keep that grit for your whole entire life. And that's something that's 
in our, the, the kids' generations now is not super prevalent and it's not being nurtured. And my kids the same way. I have a, I have two teenagers. Well, my son just turned 18 and my daughter is 15 and a half and they are both wrestlers. Yes. Oh my God. And if you go into a wrestling room, like you, you have a 50 chance. Like you don't have a team that's going to help you or support. Like <laughs> it's you all the way. And it's you against another person. And this also brings me back to like hairstylists. Like it's you against another person or so we I play understand. that, right? But you both are good. You're both working and grinding it out and doing the work behind the scenes. You're going to have a good day. You're going to have a bad day, period. But when you come back after those bad days, you come back harder. You come back with more knowledge. You come back with this grit that no one can take away from you. That's exactly. And how empowering is that? Like how many times you failed? How many times I tried to start something new and failed, but just kept going? Literally what I'm doing now. (laughs) but I was like no I know I can help people I know you know what I mean and you just keep going and you keep going and you keep getting up and it's so empowering when you can like when you kind of come out into the light and you're like oh god I'm so glad I actually it's funny we're talking about this I shared a story today in my Instagram and it's Seth Rogen so I have a huge thing for Seth Rogen I don't know why not like a sexual thing but like I wish he was my best friend so badly his laugh like I just want to hang out with him and James Franco <laughs> a little bit more with James Franco but anyways this is why we're here um we could do another podcast like this anyways uh, he was talking about the only way you're gonna fail is if you quit and he's like honestly I've seen it in the like Hollywood so many times where you have these actors and they have the same skill level and one of them just makes it and the other one doesn't and it's because this one he would fail and then oh for me fail oh I can't shouldn't I'm not going to try that again I'm not going to do it and then they just drop off and his whole entire thing was like the only way you're going to lose that life is if you quit yep or if you keep failing and never actually learn anything and take anything away from it but yeah and there is like failing forward <laughs> And then just failing like and, and giving up on something, right? Because even this year, um, I I failed a lot, a lot, right? And in another podcast, I can't remember the name of it, but I talk about my biggest fail ever in life is when I lost my home and my kids were little and literally like I, I it was the worst thing ever. Um, that fail brought me to where I am today and actually was for me and shed a light on something that I was settling for and didn't even realize it. So the universe was like, okay, well, you keep saying you want this, but where you're at, you're not going to get it. So we're just going to like take you up and it's going to hurt like hell and we're going to plop you over here and you're going to be fine. <laughs> the universe shook you. <laughs> uh, really hard. Very, very hard. But I talk about it because it is one of those moments that, um, and we talked about this earlier, is like starting to question everything. I failed hard. And that was my wake up call. Before that, it was just settling, settling, settling. So my point of all of this and and talking about the failure and and this questioning everything is like, you don't have to fail so hard. (laughs) Like don't hit rock bottom before you're like, oh, well, maybe I'll start questioning all of these beliefs (laughs) and what's going on, right? Like that's a part of the 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 journey is yes you're going to fail on some things but it gets to be a little bit easier when you start having that self awareness and you start questioning things before it got really really hard <laughs> uh, right if you can fail and be like okay cool i totally screwed this up what can i do to make it better next time instead of just like crushing yourself about it and becoming this victim um and i think that that's the difference but i also think too that that's something that we, we have to teach children from, from when they're little, like Mm -hmm. 
And I think that that's a muscle too, being able to just like be humble and fail and then sit in it and learn from it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It's just and so much, so much life stuff, eh? Oh, I know. Right. And and we really could talk for a few more hours. And so what I'm going to do is bring it all back <laughs> and, and really leave on like we started off with the self-awareness, right? We took took you on a journey. There's a lot to unpack in all of this episode and listen to it again. Re-listen, yeah. like take whatever whatever resonates with you, just take that away from today, you know, and you'll, whatever is resonating for you will be very apparent. Like that's what you're going to hear. That's what's going to be the most apparent for you. Take that and just sit with it. See what else comes up for you, right? Like listen to your intuition and becoming self-aware is very much listening to that intuition, to your gut intuition, whatever you want to call it, that guiding thing, that invisible guiding thing inside of you that tells you, oh, I should, you know, do this or no, no, let's not like go at all. Right. That thing, if you start listening to it, it opens up this magical world because that is exactly where you get to go to, to open up the self-awareness, to open up the uh, subconscious thoughts that are holding you back to even start visioning what do you actually want what are your values what is your mission what's your um, vision of where do you want to go is listening to that intuition so taking this episode letting it be what it is for you and then taking that one step just one teeny little tiny step after 100 percent, i agree with that so much um i think that so many of us are busy doing all the time, right? We're working, we're doing all the things. Take some time, like you said, take some time to just sit because your brain can't think. It can't, it can't unravel things. It can't find awarenesses if you're just doing, 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 doing. So I think that exactly what you said, sit with this, what came, what popped out to you, sit with that for a while, deal with that. And then listen to it again, maybe in a few weeks or in a month and something else may pop out to you. And I love this so much. I love our conversations. I, your energy is contagious. I wish that I was there with you because I just want to hug you, which is maybe a creepy thing for me to say. I'm like, I just want to no, squeeze Not you. at all. <laughs> and, um, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate your energy, what you're doing in the industry. And just like, that's what it takes is people like us to just get out there. And there's so many of other hairstylists, other people listening that that's what you get to do that, like just create these relationships, have great conversations, move in a way that is easy and happy for you. Cause when you're genuinely you, you attract these people. Like, I don't even remember Like, I think it was Hannah that introduced us. It's Hannah. I yeah. Love and I love Hannah. <laughs> yes. Oh. So like all of these synchronicities start to happen and beautiful things happen. So I do want to hear though, like for everyone listening, like where do we find you? How do we get into your um your stuff. life and all yeah. your stuff? Yeah. <laughs> um Instagram is where I show up the most. Um, you can like have a sneak peek into my my real life and all my business stuff and tips and tricks and all of the all of the education and all of the stuff. And then there's like a million links in there in my bio. I have like five day client attraction challenges where we talk about a lot of day one is like a lot of the stuff that we talked about here, right? Self-awareness, really creating a vision. Um, and then, yeah, I have like my bigger course and coaching for um, stylist launch program is what it's called. But yeah, I would say Instagram, um, it even links to my website. Just kind of, we'll keep it simple and, and say that it's carly.am.more. Beautiful. And I will have it in the show notes. So go to the show notes, click on her link, make it really easy and go talk to her. And just like I say on every episode, like, let us know, what did you get away from this? Because like you, I spend a lot of time on Instagram. It's a real human on the other end. Like we want to know, we want to have conversations. It's not just a like, 
you know, be a flower on the wall and like, listen and come talk to us. Like we love this. So, you know, mine, you know, is the right now is the clean beauty business coach on Instagram, but yours, Carly dot Anne dot more dot more. Okay. And we'll have it in the show notes. Awesome. Thank you so much for today. I loved this. Yes. Thank you. And thank you everybody for listening. If you got value out of this episode, like, subscribe, follow, all of that good stuff so you can keep getting more information like this. And so we know what you want. Like if you tell me what you want on these episodes, I will create. I will find the person for you and we will create. So happy listening. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for tuning in to the Salon Owner's Holistic Blueprint. If you enjoyed today's episode, be sure to follow and subscribe. Until next time, stay inspired, stay passionate, and keep thriving in the world of holistic beauty.